Hello everyone and welcome to the Tissy Show live from my Lamichonette studios where we talk about businesses and gifts. Now before we get started, make sure you keep up with us on social media platforms. You can like us on Facebook at Behind The Legend, follow us on Instagram at Behind The Legend and subscribe to our YouTube channel at Behind The Legend TV. Now on today's episode, make sure you hold your stomachs because you're going to be laughing your sides out. I have with me one of the top rated Haitian comedian artist in the building, Blex Flex Man Pierre. Woo! Did you say Pierre? Pierre, I said Pierre. Okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> My government name is out there. Okay, it's cool. Oh, okay. Sorry, what sorry. <laughs> <laughs> now, I need to, I just want to verify, is Blex your real name or is that a stage name that is my real name my name is blex pierre my goodness that's Spells b l e c k s pierre, pierre. you know pierre <laughs> yeah my mom is cool like that you she's you right she's you're right cool like it that. takes a cool person to come up with an awesome <laughs> strategic name like that yeah. <laughs> <laughs> please 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 let me know how did you get started into comedy um well i you know when you're a kid whatever you watch the most mm -hmm. somehow you will end up you know becoming... staying with that so <laughs> i used to watch a whole bunch of stuff but i got stuck with that one thing that which one is comedy thing wow yeah. okay is this where you imagined yourself when you were a kid um i always wanted to be like a, a filmmaker i wanted to be in a movie oh, okay so you know, step by step, little by little, mm -hmm. you know, this brings this, you know, just do the math. And um, yeah, I never wanted to be what my mom wanted me to be, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Which is cool with what I do now, mm -hmm. but she wanted me to be a, a, a pe, a priest. A, pe, a priest, okay. Yeah. I always so. feel like the Haitians, uh, and it's no disrespect because I'm Haitian as well, Haitians always stick to three things, teacher, doctor, pastor, or priest. No, my priest, yeah. And, you know, it's it's kind of hard for them to accept you venturing out of those fields. Was that an easy thing to do? Well, I still fulfill my mom's needs. Okay. You know, I am a priest still. <laughs> a comedy <laughs> priest. <laughs> okay. You're right. <laughs> but uh, I don't know. But, uh, she's cool with what I do. Mm -hmm. She loves it. She supports me a lot. That's awesome. And, uh, yeah, uh, of course, she wanted me to be, you know, all the things mm -hmm. like, a, like a doctor, like you said, mm -hmm. when I move here in this country. Oh yeah, you know, Kone. Oh, it doesn't need be kicking opportunity. Mm -hmm. Well, this is my opportunity to do what I love the most. That's and, awesome. Uh, yeah. That's so. it. That's it. At, with, do you feel like comedy is something that you were born with, or something that you got into? Well, no. I think I was born with pain because I was crying. Pain. Okay. <laughs> that's that's a that's a new one. <laughs> <laughs> They just dropped me in this world. Uh, yeah, no mercy. <laughs> but no, I just—I think I just, like I said, I just built comedy. You know, I just. You built it inside. Yeah, you. I just choose something because I have friends. They really love drama. You mm -hmm. know, like they do films. All they do is drama stuff or love stuff. Wow. Okay. And me, I see most of the things that I do, they're comedy. It's just because you know it's it's something natural with me. You know, yes. sometimes not to everybody. You know, some people think that I'm lame. Uh, him, like, uh, which is you know that comes with the territory yeah, uh, which is true mm -hmm. and some people like they said yo I, I just look at your face and laugh I'm like <laughs> is that a good thing I don't know <laughs> because I, don't... I have serious stuff that I do too so when I'm doing my serious <laughs> stuff if I tell you bro um, you need to come and then uh, I, I work for a law firm which is true mm -hmm. so how are you going to take me seriously if you look at me oh, that's the comedian I'm not going to sign up but it's funny though. Wow. So this is tough somehow. But <laughs> <laughs> would you say that there was anybody in your family who was a comedian? Were you following in any footsteps, or are you the first one to venture out? Well, I am the first one and the, the only one. Okay. Yeah. But my mom is funny, her her own way. But she was never like a, a comedian <laughs> or whatever. Yeah. Back in the day, she tell me I you know little stuff, but mm -hmm. yeah. So it's but just it wasn't. Funny. It's just you. Okay. The whole family is looking at one person, or one comedian, one filmmaker. I'm the only one doing what I do. And that's you. That's is me. so. If there wasn't anybody in your family, there must be a role model that you looked up to. Oh yes, and his name is Mr. Bean. Mr. Bean. Yes, man. <laughs> that's the man that turned me into what I am today. Are you serious? 
Definitely. Why, of all comedians, why Mr. Bean? Well, like I said, back in the days, I used to watch a lot of stuff. Mm -hmm. But him, something with him just... Because it's, it's, I, I was in Haiti, I didn't speak English. Okay. So I watched him a lot. Mm -hmm. It was very good. I couldn't stop watching him. Wow. And I knew he wasn't Haitian. Mm -hmm. He don't talk. So to me, the acting, you know, stayed, spoke for itself. You know, yeah, it, it's like you know, I ended loving acting through him. Wow. Okay. All he does, you know, do something, and then you're gonna love it. So <laughs> that's the guy that actually made me fall in love with acting and comedy because he's a comedian. And when I move in this country, mm -hmm. and I moved right after high school. So and I didn't learn English that much when I was in Haiti. So I came here in 2010. Okay. And so that's why I have an accent. I don't know if it's a Jamaican accent, Chinese, African. <laughs> My accent is strong enough for you to know that I'm not American. You're from, so, you from somewhere. Somewhere there. <laughs> so I ended really um, use my Mr. Bean love to do to, comedy wow. or to entertain people because... I don't really have to talk. That's how I started. Mm -hmm. So now, you know, I talk here and there. I don't know why I ended, you know, talking because some people still, you know, think you're say, funny hey, about it. I didn't think he was Haitian, bro. If you didn't think I was Haitian, my accent is, or your accent <laughs> is stronger than my accent. Sometimes, you know, some people they talk in front of me. I'm like, wow, you know, you sound really like American. And somebody else said, no, he has a very heavy accent. Mm -hmm. like, what? Um, is that a statement that you get a lot? Are you uh, am I like, Haitian? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's because most of my skits, like they call them, so they, they they're not Haitian skits. They, you know, there's no such a thing. American it's skits, a, Haitian skits. It's no. just a skit. Comedy is comedy. Comedy is comedy. I believe comedy is universal, and I, I think yeah. I believe that's what like when you said Mr. Bean, it's kind of shocking, but then I understand it because <laughs> to be able to make somebody laugh without saying nothing at all, you actually have to have yeah. like something there you yeah. have to be have to have comedic it. yeah and he's he's, he's not smiling it's no. just it's first of all it's the way he looks <laughs> <laughs> the way he walks the way he walks and then he has on that suit why does he have on that gray suit and that tie and <laughs> he's probably just being completely himself yeah that is amazing, that is amazing. <laughs> i do love jim carrey as well but uh mr bean is the man i wow. would say that that's yeah. Wow, wow, wow. His, his real name is Sebastian, by the way. Sebastian. Roman Atkinson, Atkinson Sebastian. Yeah, that's a name. So his name is just as unique as yours. Yeah. That is, that is <laughs> something. <laughs> is there a way for you to be uh, able to control how much content you have? I know if you've been doing this since two, 2012, mm -hmm. that's been, what, like eight years? Yeah. Well, I, my friends and I, you know, we, you know, the Flex Gang, shout out to the Flex Gang, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. <laughs> we, you know, we've done so many skits, including short films. Mm -hmm. So sometimes, you know, we try to put it together, you know, hey, let's just try to count. I know it's hard. When we say it, we don't actually do it. I uh -huh. go home, I try to do it. And then you just kind of give up because it's so much. And then I go on Facebook, I, tr I try to count. I go on Instagram and try to count. But the thing is, I do find a number. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, back in the days, we done, um, we did so many skits. Some of them, we hate them. Oh, oh shoot, okay, that was okay. trash. That's so we delete those. And then you take so I can't even count these. Okay. So at least, you know, I ended, you know, with the ones that we see, you know, from Facebook and Instagram, like 1,200 like, skits, you know, actually there. 1,200? Yeah. Well, I mean, it's been a long time. Eight, you eight, mean like 1,200? Like, 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 one, two, zero, zero. Yeah, two, okay. yeah. One, two, zero. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of skits, because I have to, I have to mention this. Yeah. You did this skit about the Nigerian scam. The scammers. Uh, uh, and I cannot get over that. How did you? That last part with my um the ah uh, um, my money, my money, my body, my body, my money. How did you even? How did? How did that? How did? Actually, uh, <laughs> the main idea for this skit was show how Nigerians, you know, they scam people. Mm -hmm. But that's not how they do it. I just wanted to make it funny. Yes. So the ending, I didn't have that. Wow. And um, it was just came naturally. Somebody was, show it was actually my girlfriend, Jessica. She was shooting that 
part, like the ending in the car. Okay, okay. She was shooting the part for me. And as soon as I was in the car, I'm like, okay, you know, I need to do something, you know, because that's what the people want from him, mm -hmm. from blacks. Yes. They always say, oh, he got that little thing. He always said at the end, oh, he got this face or whatever. I'm like, <laughs> back in the days, I, I used to use one little sound, you know, mm -hmm. a sad sound. And then I, I make my face like, like oh, okay. they love yeah, that a lot with, uh, with the sound. <laughs> and I, I kind of stopped doing this. Mm -hmm. I ended doing something else was, um, um, wow, you know, they love that. But I'm like, you know, this time, let me just find something to say, something to do. And it just and came up. I didn't have that, you know. I'm like, hey. No, my money, my, my money, my money. It is what it is. <laughs> I, I, I was trying to, you know, like be like them, you know, talk like them, but I can't really because I need to practice more. Because oh, wow. some of them, you know, I have a lot of Nigerians, Africans. Like, I have mm -hmm. a whole bunch of them. Good lord. Supporters. I have a whole bunch of them. You know, sometimes awesome. they come, they laugh. They say, this is not how we talk, but we love it, though. <laughs> and that's good to not be yeah. able to offend anybody through yeah. comedy, because that's not the point. You're not no, trying no. to offend, but you just, you know, try to bring, make light of a situation. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, we will be right back on the Tissy Show. We have the amazing Blex Flex in the building. Stay tuned for you more content. You said we'll be right back? We'll be right back. Where are we going? Uh, we're going. We're, 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 we'll be right back. <laughs> Hello everyone, this is Mr. Lumia Shinet, the author of the Brokenness of God book and the exclusive producer of Behind Legend. I want to speak to you guys concerning this book, okay? This book will help you with a lot of things that you are dealing with. It has great wisdom in there, knowledge and understanding. If you want to know how to deal with your pain, if you want to know how to deal with your struggles, if you want to know how to deal with your brokenness or anything that you may be dealing with, this book will help you. I want you guys to understand this. One thing that you always have to remember, problems are not there to kill you. Problems are there to educate you. That is why I always tell people, don't you ever run away from your problems because you need those problems and able to know who God is. And God uses this brokenness to show his power in your life. This is Mr. Lumishinet, the author of The Brokenness of God book. And we are. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Tissy Show. We are here with Blex, Flex, Ming, Pierre, Haitian's top artist, comedian. <laughs> you know who he is. <laughs> <laughs> now, I have the million dollar question yeah. that people want to know. Who writes the skits? I do. You do? Yes, man. Thank All you. of them. What the? Sometimes, you know, people give me ideas. Yo, I have this idea, whatever. Um, that would be dope. And I'm like, mm -hmm. oh, this is really dope. And I go ahead and do it. And then I give him credit. Okay. But, um, you know, it's like here and there. But um, all my skits, yeah, it's me. They're weird. You know, I mean, all, wow. all my stuff are weird. So <laughs> you will know <laughs> if something is not me. Because <laughs> it, it doesn't match the, yeah. the, the, the rest of the yeah. flow of everything but I else. But I really love a good idea. You give me okay. something, I'm like, whoa, that's really nice. I'm going to go ahead and do it. That's good. That's awesome. So I want to get into this other side of you that your fans might not know about yet, okay. which is the filmmaking side. You mentioned it earlier before we went into the break that uh, you saw yourself as a filmmaker, but you, you know there were some steps that you wanted to take. Where does this desire come from? Okay, well... Like I said earlier, back in the days, I see, I watch movies mm -hmm. and it's a big deal. You know, it's not like, I'm like, wow, you see somebody acting, yes. you see the person, but what's in front of the person, I always think about it when I was a kid. That's I was in true. Haiti, so I'm thinking about cameras. Listen, I don't even know how those cameras look, used to look like. I don't wow. know the, the behind the scenes. Yes. All I saw was Jim Carrey or Mr. Bean. Mm -hmm. I see them, but what's happening was the only thing that was holding me back okay from actually thinking about going for this career okay okay so you you just weren't sure what was actually happening behind the scenes yeah so i i, I didn't really know but, but even when i moved here i didn't mm -hmm. go to school for for film. filmmaking no okay. so it's with social media mm -hmm. and meeting people and you're introduced to so much actually it's on Facebook, somebody hit me up and made me go to 
California back in 2012 really? for a movie okay. just because of my little acting on Facebook. Wow. When I went, I had the opportunity to see what's going on behind the scenes. Behind the scenes. And that's where you saw all the work and the after, cameras. After I came back, I spent eight days shooting. Mm -hmm. They flew me there. I came back here. I came back with something. Somebody gave me access to their editing software. It's Adobe Premiere Pro. Okay, okay. You could actually let somebody else edit. You just give them your password and stuff. He gave me that. That's I came awesome. back because I didn't know how to put two clips together. Okay. I came back since then. I started shooting skits. Mm -hmm. I learned my angles, my, you know, I don't know everything about cameras. You know, don't get me wrong. You're I just, still learning, I, baby steps. I'm just that angle guy. I don't, I, I don't really know how to set up the ISO or the FSO, Z, ZW32. ABC. My friends, you know, they know <laughs> things about cameras. They be talking about numbers. Hey, yo, Stan, you, uh, so can you put the camera on 183? I'm like, 180 what? <laughs> Bro, give me that thing. I turn it on, make sure it's not blurry. <laughs> and then I shoot. So with the filmmaking, mm -hmm. doing skits, a minute skit, a minute skit, two minutes. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I could add more. By saying this, I feel like I could tell stories. Telling yes. a story is like telling a movie. Yes. And I fell in love with doing bigger projects. So I wow. did my first movie, which is Jet, was very cool. A lot of people really love it. And I'm okay. like, okay, you know what? I would go for something bigger because they said, why well, was like it so it. short? Mm -hmm. And then I did my second movie. And that's always an inspiration to want to go more when people, when the audience asks for it. Yeah. That means that they're really watching, they're paying attention, and that they're they're feeding into what you're giving them. Correct. Wow. Now that you've mentioned that you have your movies, what is your vision for your company? Do you want to expand? Where do you plan on taking it? Yes, expanding is. Uh, I will say it's more like um, it's a ch well, not even a challenge. This is where I want to be. I want to be that one person that actually said he wants to be on a platform. And he actually make it happen. Okay. Because I want to reach Netflix. I want to reach Hollywood. Whatever it is, you know, this. Uh, All those the platforms pick. that yeah, are out right there. Right there. Because I know I can do it. Mm -hmm. But I can do it on my own. You need support. Yes. You need your content need to be you good. Need the resources. Talented. Yeah. So that's what I'm working on. If I hear people say, yo, you can do it. Why should I say no to myself? Okay, if somebody believes in you, yes. that should give you all the more to believe in yourself as well. This is it. And look at all your content. You have <laughs> the resources. Yeah. You have the support. Of, yeah. It's just, like you said, it's baby steps. Nah, I need the work. Only, no. Wow. Nice so in me. five years, what is your five-year plan or your five-year goal? Oh, my five-year goal is um, I want to be, what's the day? Tuesday. Tuesday, okay. <laughs> well, let's say on a Wednesday because on Wednesdays, I always shoot skits with my friends. I would like on a Wednesday for me to be in Hollywood, uh, where they call it like the Walk of Fame, whatever. The, you know? yeah. I, think it's I want to be there and making a phone call, bro. Can you come please and watch my star for me? You get, <laughs> it's kind of dirty, it's and then I call like right a there. yeah. I'm like, <laughs> and then I bring it. Thank you, you know. Spray that star. Yep, we made it. So ah. I want to be there, you know, like um, to be recognized by the world, mm -hmm. still being the person that I don't want to change. That's okay. one thing. I don't want to change. I don't want to do nothing. Yeah. Is, would you plan on sticking to your Haitian roots or is your comedy or your work just general? Well, I would say general because okay. um, I used to feel bad when people kept saying, um, why don't you do your things in, in Creole? Creole or, mm -hmm. you know, this is one thing that bothers me a lot. If somebody, if you want to get under my skin, just come to me or my comment and say, oh, this guy is not doing things in Creole. Like, mm -hmm. this is a big problem to me because it's I love my people. I do both. So just because you come today, you see something in English. You didn't come yesterday when mm -hmm. I did something in Creole. I know it's lame, but it makes me feel some type of way. I don't know. It's, it's that you can say whatever you want. He's skinny. Is this you wasting your time? As soon as you talk about me not doing skits in Creole, this is killing it's me. It's a it's a pet peeve. Because I will never stop doing both. Because comedy is universal, yeah. like we mentioned earlier. If you just stick to one set of an audience, what about the rest of the others sure. that are waiting to receive from you? Yeah. Wow. And I, I need to 
Can I vent? Yes. In Creole or English? You can do both. Okay. I can translate. Why you okay? Mona Hitian, you know to you fem fashe. My Haitian people, you always make me angry. Mad? Thank you. Mad? Mm -hmm. Okay. Parce que les no vini na comment moi, dem fe en video. Because when you come in my comments, when I video make, when I make a video? Yeah. Okay, okay. Wam dim, oh, mi si pa fe bagay yo en Creole, si en anglais. Okay. Uji, I mean, we you say with an attitude. I, I want you to translate <laughs> that with an attitude. Oh, me say that say you want Creole. Mm -mm. Okay, you don't do things Creole. Mm -mm. Yeah. Well, okay. guess what? When I do things in Creole. Okay, but guess what? Let me say back in Creole. Lot nation yo, Jim. Wow, so funny. But please put a subtitle. Okay. The other nation tell me, wow. It's funny, please, but please put some caption. Put a subtitle. Put yeah, a subtitle. Yeah. Okay. But, okay. Mon Haitian yo. Me, mon, no. But my Haitian people. C'est pas ça aujourd'hui, non? That's not what they say, no? Mais ça aujourd'hui. That's what they say. Nous avons composé par Haitian. Okay. Uh, this guy is acting like he's not Haitian. Shit. <laughs> Dog. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what I meant. Okay, okay. Yeah. Well, thank okay. you, though. So you get the message, you? <laughs> It has been an honor having Blex Flex Main on the show. You have tickled me to my core. <laughs> Is there any uh, message that you want to send to those comedians, those entrepreneurs, those filmmakers out there? Um, yes. Um, I mean, uh, the message... I. I don't really feel like I have a big message mm -hmm. because I'm not there yet. I'm still working on it. Um, I am a patient person. I work hard. I I always try to bring to life what I envision. So if you have something inside your head, the only reason why you're not going to do it is because you don't want to do it. And if you find one supporter, that's all you need because when I first started, I had one person. Wow. Shout out to Yellow. He was that one guy right in front of my house all the time when I'm doing my skits. He's looking at me. He comes, so he gave me the energy, the the, the vibe. So mm -hmm. just do it for fun first. You know, with this whole comedy thing, most of you guys think money, money, money. No, don't even go there because you will eh, just do it for fun first. If you love it, you will get something out of it. If you're just going to go for the money or for the fame, like me, I had like 300,000 followers on Facebook and boom, I lost that page. Wow. I never stopped. Oh. I lost the page right before I was about to publish my first movie. I didn't oh stop. My goodness. It's like, to, to me, I'm like, I just start, start over mm -hmm. on Instagram. And most of my followers, they were all on Facebook. I'm like, ah, let me choose another platform. Wow. But I'm still the same person. You see what I mean? So the people that actually knew me back in the days on Facebook, mm -hmm. they kept looking for me. Some of them actually come on Instagram. I've been looking for you, where were you? Right. But please don't do it for the fame. You can do one video today, you just blow up. And somebody can be doing this thing for five years. They still don't have the same amount of followers you mm -hmm. can get in one day. It's true. Sometimes I get 4,000 followers in one day. I'm not BSing, this is true. Some big pages, Mm -hmm. They see a video that we posted, 400, like 4,000, 4,000 4, 000, followers in one day. So it's just videos, you know, just do it for fun. This is America. Land of opportunity, right? Yes. Well, sometimes don't wait for opportunities to come to you, create your own opportunity. Very good. That's what I did. It has been an honor. I will see you guys next time on the Tissy Show. Yes, see you next time. See you.